Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here with a video showing you how to make an elderberry rose hip oxymel, which is one of my absolute favorite herbal preparations, and it's a family favorite of ours as well. It is kid safe for kids over one year, but make absolutely sure that if you plan on wanting to give this to an infant younger than one year, switch out the honey for an actually vegan sweetener like maple syrup or even agave. Um, but my number one choice would be maple syrup. Uh, glycerin can be good too, but I don't have any glycerin, but there are your options just in case you would like to have some uh, vitamin C rich immune building preparation that would be safe to give to a child younger than one. But that being said, this is one of our absolute favorite preparations because it's so yummy. Um, and then anecdotally, my little girl, she's about two and a half. Uh, every single time she went to the nursery at church, she would seem to bring home a cold previously. But once I started giving her a little bit of this in her cup on the mornings before we would head in, she stopped bringing home sicknesses. And so I don't know for sure if it was the oxymel but I don't know that we can prove that it wasn't. So I'll go ahead and share this recipe with you just because I'm gonna, I'm getting ready to do it myself. And then you can see just how easy the process is. So let's go ahead and get started. So as I said, this recipe is based in honey and apple cider vinegar. Uh, so that is what an oxymel is. It's an extract using honey and apple cider vinegar. Um, and so I have already added one cup of honey to my ball jar, which I really appreciate because it comes, you know, pre-labeled with the measurements. And so I'll go ahead and add one cup of apple cider vinegar now, raw apple cider vinegar with the mother, and we'll mix that up. So I like to mix the apple cider vinegar and the honey separately from the herbs first just because the honey is so thick that it takes a while to mix and it's actually kind of difficult to mix it into the uh, apple cider vinegar very well if you already have all the herbs in there so I'm going to go ahead and get this completely mixed so that it is a 100% um, homogeneous mixture um, and I will or homogeneous mixture I just said that word so bad um, homogeneous <laughs> homogeneous mixture um, and I was gonna say I'll be right back but it looks like it already happened it was pretty quick um, so I'm just sort of making sure that all of it is mixed well and then now I have one half cup of elderberries, which I will pour in, and one half cup of rose hips, and I'll mix that together. And so this is going to sit now for six weeks before I use it. So it'll be a beautiful, thick, dark pink preparation at that point. Um, and it's just gonna be absolutely gorgeous and tasty and wonderful and healthy. So what's great about doing preparations like this with the rose hips is they are very high in vitamin C, but if you boil them or cook them, then you lose a lot of that vitamin C content. And so I do like to do preparations like this that are more like a cold infusion to help keep the vitamin C intact. Um, and also, as, as for your information, when you do a vinegar extract, anything involving a vinegar, use a plastic lid because the vinegar will eat through metal and you don't want that metal stuff getting into your final preparation. 
So the recipe for this really is one part elderberry, one part rose hips, two parts apple cider vinegar, and then two parts honey. So this recipe was made with one half cup being the one part. So it was a half cup each of the herbs and then one cup each of the apple cider vinegar and the honey. Um, and so like I said, that'll sit for about six weeks. And then once I decant it, we will be enjoying that so much. So if you decide to try to make this recipe, uh, once it's finished and you strain it, you can store it in the fridge. And I'm not sure how long it will stay good for. I think probably at least a year. But I seriously doubt it will last that long because it is seriously that good. We like to flavor our water with it and um, put it into sparkling water and all of that. It makes an absolutely delicious drink. And that is one of the best ways I think to do herbal medicine is having it be part of your everyday life and part of just like your food, especially if it's something like this and it tastes delicious. It's sweet and tart and just mm. And then you're motivated to do it more. And then I think that that's kind of when you start seeing more of the benefits is when it becomes a part of your everyday life. Uh, even every meal, different plants can lend you their restorative, regenerative healing properties. And it just ends up creating a life that is full of health and vitality. And I don't know, there's, there's a sweetness to it. I really love plants and herbal medicine for that reason. Uh, so this is a great way to um, make a medicine very easily and um, with not, not much trouble. So I will go ahead really fast and touch on the honey. Uh, one of the reasons I do use honey in my herbal preparations is we use a raw local honey um, from local beekeepers uh, who are, I'm, I'm very happy with their operation and the way that they do things. Um, but the reason raw local honey is so important to us in particular is because both my husband and my younger son, and now even my daughter recently has been showing signs or sorry, my husband and my younger son used to have really bad allergies and now they're pretty much done. Like it, it, it's something that my husband used to go to the doctor, like to get shots, like allergy shots. It was severe. And now his allergies have virtually disappeared. And the same thing has happened with my younger son. Every now and then if it rains and the pollen count gets high, you know, they might have a tiny flare up that's gone really fast. But it used to be just a reality that my husband would sit around with um, toilet papers up his nostrils. He called it nose tampons. <laughs> and that's just like the way that he sat around the house uh, just because his nose ran so much that it was too much trouble even to wipe it. So he has seen a drastic improvement in his own health. And I think so much of it was going plant-based and going vegan, but I know a lot of it in, in my personal, again, uneducated kind of anecdotal opinion, I think a lot of it had to do with beginning to incorporate raw local honey in small amounts into things like tea and, and, and I guess basically tea because that's basically the only way that he ever took it. Uh, but now beginning to create things like oxymels um, and still occasionally using it in tea, but then I'm also beginning to infuse herbal medicine into honey. So like we have a lavender honey, which I also can use to help any kind of symptoms. And so my daughter has recently begun to show some symptoms, which is kind of out of the, like, out of the blue for me, like, oh my gosh, like why on earth is this happening? And then it was like, oh yeah, we used to have allergies in this house. And so it's kind of interesting. So I'm beginning to start supporting her with a little bit of the raw local honey and then other medicinal healthy plants. And it seems to really help the allergies because the theory behind it is that the honey contains, it's almost like a homeopathic remedy, right? It contains tiny amounts of the local pollen and local allergens. And then it sort of inoculates your body over time to where you end up building a, a healthy and proper response to these things in your body rather than the hyper overactive immune response that we see with allergies. And so that combined with some other things I feel is going to begin to really help her as well. 
and then hopefully we will just sort of see the eradication of allergies from our home and that would be you know my hope so that's just sort of my my take on why we're using honey um and you know what what we're doing especially because the channel is called the vegan prepper <laughs> channel and so then it's like why is there honey on a vegan channel and that is why um i've discussed in the past honey and beeswax and kind of the ethics behind um using certain things that are technically animal products and then still calling myself a vegan because i do genuinely I'm a, like a vegan for the animals. Um, there's just so many, so many factors. And so if you're interested in the video where I could discuss a little bit more about the ethics and the ways to think about it, um, I have a video. It's like, am I even vegan? I'm going to link it down below for you so that you can see uh, the very short version in case you don't feel like watching that video is that um, you can be vegan for multiple reasons. Um, or there are multiple reasons to be vegan. And for me personally, as a, as a complex human being who has, you know, many things going on and many thoughts and many views and many um, feelings about things, um, my two chief reasons are number one for the animals and number two for the environment. And then sometimes it ends up being number one for the environment, number two for the animals. So it's like, those two primary motivations war with each other and then sometimes I end up making a choice that is not traditionally strict like fundamentalist religious vegan <laughs> you know? because I, I think that I don't know shipping some kind of wax from South America is just stupid when I can go straight to this local hive and get raw beeswax off their hives and I can use that in our preparations like it just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever to go outside of my local area but anyway that is not what I wanted this video to be about I just figured I would bring it up in case somebody out there is like what on earth is going on so that's it and hopefully you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the recipe and then if you want more recipe videos like this and sort of process videos so you can see like how kind of silly it is like it's so easy that to me it's almost silly to make this video <laughs> but if you'd like more content like this please let me know down below uh like subscribe comment and uh i can't wait to see you in the next one all right and as always i hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful thank you so much for watching it means the world to me see you later bye